So I'm here to review these babies. These are the Garnet Fastback Endurance in white and gray. So, let me just first start out by explaining that before I got these, I had some O'Neill elements. Uh, the O'Neills did not have ankle pivots, but I was just starting in off-road riding, and I didn't know how long I was going to be in the sport. So after about two years, two and a half years of using those O'Neills, I was going up a fairly steep hill, and I dropped my WRF on my leg, and I nearly twisted and I nearly broke my ankle. So it was not very comfortable, and I decided to get some better quality boots. And so I picked Guernets. Now the reason I picked Guernets is because they're the only boot that's made in Italy, or even, I think even in Western Europe for that matter. Alpine Stars, Forma, a lot of these are made in China. And you can, I don't know if you can see, this area here, and this area here, and there is actual real leather. Of course, the leather goes all the way through. It stitches through here. You can see the, the line where the leather is, even under this plastic. This is also suede, black suede. Now, there are about four levels of Guernet boots. SG12s, SG10s, Fastbacks, and I think the GX1s. And I picked the Fastback uh, second from the bottom because uh, for two reasons, that's what I could afford. Yeah, that's what I could afford, and actually they're, they're reasonably flexible in this direction, but not too much that direction, which is what I wanted. Although, let me take this off here. Although the SG12 is a more stiff boot, this is still fairly stiff. You can see it like push down a little bit, and then <clears throat> if I hold the actual foot, I really can't, I can't bend it. See, I'm trying to, to fold it up and it just won't go. Where it does bend is right here at the ankle hinge or the ankle pivot. So they are quite good. Now, as far as the protection, there's plastic in the toe, goes all the way up here and around the back, the heel. And then we have a, a plastic reinforced spine and a plastic shin guard right there. And finally, we've got this kind of like a cuff. It's a bit, I would like a bit more reinforcement, but actually it is still quite good. So that's one thing I like is this the stiffness of the boot um, in, the, in the heel and the foot. I really can't bend it at all. And it's fairly stiff side to side in the ankle where it needs to be. Uh, further up, it's got a bit more flex like this, especially this way, but then it's got a lockout point right here where this can make contact and it'll stop it from going too far back. Now, let me put, put one on. Buckles are nice metal buckles and they can be tightened by just kind of pulling them, lifting up and adjusting a ratchet right there. So they have four buckles that are really quite solid. And you got a pull tab here, so you just pull it on. It's a bit tight around the ankle, <clears throat> but once I get it on, it buckles easily. Once I get it on, it, it feels quite spacious. These are size 12. Now, normally I will get a size 13 for an off-road boot because I like the extra space. So if I strike a rock or a root, I won't injure my, or damage my toes. However, this is so large, my toes are just swimming in the space down here. I'm moving them around quite a bit. I can't even touch the tip. So I, I really like the fact that these boots are true to size. 
uh, for some reason, size 12s over the past 20 years have been getting smaller and smaller, it feels like. Uh, another thing I like about the boots, like I may have said, is you get a good amount of flex this way to a lockout point, and then you get a good amount of flex this way. You don't need break-in time. That's one been my experience. I don't need to, to walk, wear these boots around the house really much at all. I did, but I noticed that I didn't really have to break them in. They just felt the same when I first put them on and then when I used them on the bike. So that's the cool thing about the Fastbacks is I don't really think you need break-in time. Uh, this is good. This is a rubber patch right here. The problem is, is there is no rubber patch right here. The suede is partially grippy on the bike, but it would be nice if this whole area or even a large section had some rubber for extra grab. This looks like a rubber thing, but it's not, it's plastic. Not too big of a deal, but uh, it, I guess that's one of the problems with this boot is there isn't much in the way of rubber uh, padding on the inside of the boot to grip your bike. So the, the benefits, good quality leather, very well built, uh, hand built in Italy, stitching everywhere, everywhere you see stitching instead of just gluing things. The bottom is very grippy on the pegs, more grippy than my O'Neill's. I get good traction, even though the pegs are not very sharp, I need to, to maybe sharpen them up a bit. But all the same, these grab the pegs very nicely. They're okay walking around. There isn't too much tread on the bottom. But, you know, if you're going to be doing motocross or enduro riding, your wheels, your knobby tires are what are supposed to be gripping the ground, not your feet. Your feet are supposed to be on the pegs. Also, they are not too heavy. Uh, heavier than my previous boots, but Compared to my friend's SG12s, I've checked my friend's Garney SG12s out, and those things are much heavier. But then again, the SG12 is the top of the line boot from the top of the line company. The SG12 is more of a motocross boot. Uh, of course, you could use them anywhere you want, but this is a bit lighter, maybe not quite as heavily built, so maybe this is more of an enduro boot. <clears throat> Naturally, you can use the SG12 for enduro, and you could use this for motocross, but um, this lighter construction means you're less likely going to get fatigued uh, when you're lifting your leg and putting uh, your legs on the pegs and down on the ground like we often do in enduro. And in enduro, you're not gonna be getting really big air. So I don't, I don't really feel like I need the extra protection that the SG12s would afford. And uh, the SG12s are over $600 when I bought these and these are about about 400, a little bit less than 400. So I feel like this was definitely worth the buy. I think also they're quite attractive. People have complimented me on them. I try to keep them clean. White is difficult to keep clean, I understand that. Uh, two reasons I wear white. Number one, it matches my, my outfit and my bike. So you know, you, you wanna be matchy-matchy. You wanna look good on, out on the track. But also, probably the biggest reason I wear white boots is I like light-colored gear because I'm in the tropics, I'm in a hot weather, and every bit of light color I can wear helps me reduce the amount of sun that I absorb. It helps keep me cooler. And uh, yeah, I don't even normally wear a black shirt outside when I'm, when I'm riding because it just gets too hot. So uh, in summary, I would say that I've written, well, I've, I've taken these on uh, some, uh, a hard enduro race. I've taken them out on some trails. Uh, they are much easier to walk around in than my previous boots, like going up a hill where you're leaning forward like this and you're going up a hill. It's a lot easier to walk around in. They feel a lot more comfortable and you can tighten. If you don't have ankle hinges like this one, you have to tighten, you have to leave this buckle really loose so you can move, but with these, because I have a nice hinging system here, I can really tighten this down. I can tighten the boot down all around and it really fits closely to my, my leg. So I, if you can afford to get, uh, you know, $400 boots, and if you are interested in doing trails and enduro, uh, single track, that kind of thing, or even maybe just uh, some dual sporting, I would recommend this boot.
maybe if you're going to be doing more hardcore, like supercross and motocross, you might want to look at the SG12. But as a next step up from the budget boots, I've been quite satisfied with these uh, fastbacks. And uh, I hope to keep these in good shape for the next three to five years and see how they work from there.